Hey everyone, you're listening to Fantasy Uptick. I'm Jeremiah Blue, and today we're going to be talking about my first deep sleeper of the year. Let's get to it! Joshua Kelly, running back out of UCLA. This is my first deep sleeper of the year. And when I say deep sleeper, I mean guys that you can get that are basically going undrafted in most drafts, or you can get with your last pick of the draft, or second to last pick, right before kicker, or right before defense, and third to the last pick. Depending on what kind of league you're in, dynasty leagues, obviously he'll be drafted, but he's going in the third round rookie drafts in every draft that I've seen. And sometimes he even goes undrafted in those leagues. I just want to talk about opportunity. Again, Joshua Kelly wasn't actually a guy necessarily on my radar when I was doing my rookie running backs prior to the draft, but the San Diego Chargers were as in there was a giant hole there to fill, which is, comes from Melvin Gordon who had 204 touches last year in 12 games, which equates to 17 touches per game. Now, I know a lot of people are talking about Austin Eckler taking that, which I'll get to that here in a second, but there's obviously a gap there. There's an opportunity to step in right away. And if we look at what how Joshua Kelly profiles versus Austin Eckler and Justin Jackson, who are both 200 pounds or less, Joshua Kelly being a bigger, more prototypical power back. And he plays bigger than he is, so he fits alongside Austin Eckler better than Justin Jackson. And I think he fits what often offensive coordinator Shane Steichen wants to do. So if we look back last year, Ken Wisenhut was the offensive coordinator up to week eight, and in the last week, eight weeks of the year, it was Shane Steichen. Once Shane Steichen took over, the rushing attack improved dramatically, right? And Austin Eckler's snap share dropped dramatically, and the reason for that is because they were focusing more on the ground game. They're not using Austin Eckler much as a ground and pound type running back. Obviously, they had Melvin Gordon there last year, so what you're thinking is, well, Melvin Gordon was there. Obviously, they were going to use him as the running back, but... I don't. I think this year is still going to be the same kind of concept. Maybe not to the extent that Melvin Gordon there. I don't think Joshua Kelly. I'm not saying Joshua Kelly is going to get 17 touches per game, but he could get 70 touches per game. That's the upside of a guy like Joshua Kelly. That being said, I do think that's going to be lower. I think Austin Eckler does get a little bit more involved in the running game, but I think Austin Eckler's uh, receptions drop, and I think. The Chargers, in general, are going to run the ball more this year and pass the ball less than they did last year, right? So, because if we look at what they have done, let's read read between the lines. Obviously, they kept Shane Steichen, who was the guy who basically made that shift to a run-heavy offense, and they upgraded their offensive line, like, dramatically. They traded for Trey Turner. They brought in Brian Bulaga in free agency. Mike... Pouncey was on the team last year, but he was injured for the majority of the season. Now he's back as the center. So your right side of the offensive line is just, it's its one of the better right sides of the offensive line in the entire NFL. Now the left side's a big question mark. Obviously left tackle is a huge question mark. They just lost their starting left tackle. But they brought in James Campen, who was a longtime coach at Green Bay and did a good job there. He was the Browns last year. Now he's, now he's with the Chargers. So I think the offensive line will be improved. I think, again, Steichen wants to run the ball in this offense he brings in and then of course the biggest change of all is obviously Philip Rivers is out of town and Tyrod Taylor's there if we look back on Tyrod Taylor's career it's pretty obvious that Tyrod Taylor's more of a run heavy offense kind of guy and again this is not just the style of the offense that they were running in Buffalo so if we take the 2015 to 2017 season those were the those were basically the biggest sample size we have of what Tyrod Taylor is as a quarterback, which he's a quarterback who can win games, but he's a quarterback who's not going to be your prototypical style, like a Phillip Rivers, who's going to sling the ball around the field and throw the ball. Phillip Rivers threw the ball for 597 attempts last year, or not Phillip Rivers, but the Chargers in general led by Phillip Rivers. I think Tyrod Taylor threw about four of those passes. But so for the most part, behind Phillip Rivers is about a 600 pass attempt type offense. With Tyron Taylor, the most passes he threw in Buffalo was, or the most passes that Buffalo had. So I'm accounting for the games that Tyron Taylor doesn't didn't play. So if he didn't play a whole 16 games, I'm accounting for how many pass attempts that Buffalo have altogether. 476 was the most pass attempts that Buffalo ever had during those three years where Tyron Taylor was the quarterback. Okay, 
Now, so right off the bat, we're expecting about a hundred pass attempt drop from Tyrod Taylor from Philip Rivers. And obviously, uh, Justin Herbert got drafted there in the first round. So there is, well, what would Justin Herbert do? But nobody really knows what kind of offense Justin Herbert will run. So it's easier to kind of look at Tyrod Taylor. But if we do take rookie quarterbacks from the past, they typically lean on the run when they put in a rookie quarterback. And rookie quarterbacks have a tendency to throw the ball to receivers, not necessarily running backs. So that's more of an older quarterback type thing where they kind of do the dump offs to running backs. So just, just so that that's out there. I, obviously, the pass attempts is what I'm basically saying are going to drop dramatically from Tyrod Taylor, Justin Herbert, from what Phillip Rivers did. And Phillip Rivers, historically, is one of the quarterbacks in the NFL that love to throw the ball to the running backs, maybe more than any other quarterback in the NFL. So any real drop, any real change of quarterback from Rivers to another quarterback is going to hurt the receiving running back, which in this case is Austin Eckler. Again, so now let's go back to Tyrod Taylor. Not only is the pass attempts low, but every all three seasons Tyrod Taylor was in Buffalo, the Buffalo Bills ran the ball, had more rushing attempts than passing attempts. A lot, a lot of that has to do with the, Tyrod Taylor actually running the ball as well, but they were run-heavy offenses during those three years. And again, that's not necessarily a coaching staff thing. It is what Tyrod Taylor is as a quarterback. His strength is that he keeps the defense honest in those read option type runs. He allows the middle to open up because the defensive ends have to stay wide and protect the backside in case it's a quarterback keeper. So that allows these big backs to have running room up the middle, which the running back on this roster that projects best to run in that system is Joshua Kelly. So again, I think this is this could end up being about a 50-50 split, especially towards the end of the year. Like maybe he has those rookie struggles and most teams will lean heavily on their veterans early in the year and then bring the rookies along slowly towards the end of the year your fantasy playoffs Joshua Kelly could be getting even more than the 50-50 split or more actual attempts than Eckler at the in, during that time now again a lot of that has to do with winning and losing playing from behind Chargers don't project to be the best team this year they although their defense is going to be gr vastly improved but they are in a tough division and obviously they got two of the worst quarterbacks professionally in the NFL, although Tyrod Taylor is a proven winner over the years. So they, they could be in these games, and if they are in these games, I expect them to lean heavily on the run. If they're if it projects to be a more run-heavy game or game script, I think they're going to lean more heavily on Joshua Kelly than they are going to lead towards Austin Eckler. I think Joshua Kelly is actually going to lead this team in rushing attempts this year, and he's actually not a bad passer. He showed that at the Senior at the senior Bowl like week or Senior Week over the Senior Bowl. That he's actually got decent hands, showed at the combine, he's got decent hands, and everything coming out of basically everything scouted about him was the UCLA just didn't use him in that way. And that happens a lot with a lot of college running backs that they don't necessarily get used in the passing game because in college that's not what they're asked to do. Doesn't mean that they can't catch. There's been plenty of running backs that have come out, didn't necessarily have a receiving profile in college, and then come out and can receive once they get to the NFL. That being said, again, that's not what I'm projecting. I'm just telling you that I'm not writing him off as a bad pass catcher. The, the catches that he did make, he looks like he's got decent hands. He didn't have a lot of drops or anything like that. Another thing that he's got, Joshua Kelly, that is, is that he never fumbles the ball. So out of 492 touches in, the, in, in UCLA, he only fumbled the ball three times. So again, this is a guy that they can rely on in the red zone. He's the biggest back. He's built to break tackles. He runs bigger than he is. So he projects to fit very well with Austin Eckler in this backfield. And if you're wondering, going back to Tyrod Taylor and the Buffalo Bills, he had LaShawn McCoy back in those days. So the reception totals that, as far as how much Tyrod Taylor throws the ball to the running backs, not just throws the ball in general, but throws the ball to the running backs specifically, is nowhere near how much Phillip Rivers throws the ball to the running backs. And you can't say, well, he didn't have a running back to throw the ball to. He doesn't have a guy like Austin Eckler. He had LaShawn McCoy, prime LaShawn McCoy, 27, age 27 through 29. And in those years, he threw it to LaShawn McCoy, or LaShawn McCoy had 32 receptions, 50 receptions, and 59 receptions. So I'm not projecting Austin Eckler to get, I mean, maybe 70 at the most, because and now it's going to be, he's not going to get into that 90 range like a lot of people are projecting him to get, because A, they're going to, there's going to be a change of philosophy there in the offense. It's a completely new offense with Tyra Taylor versus Phillip Rivers. They're going to lean more heavily on the run, 
and Tyrod Taylor doesn't happen to throw the ball to the running back when he does throw the ball as much as Phillip Rivers did, and he will throw for about 100, he'll have about 100 less pass attempts than Phillip Rivers typically has. So if we're looking at, we're taking all this into account, we understand what's, what's going to happen in the offense, I think that Joshua Kelly kind of projects to be one of those guys that, nobody's really talking about and could really help you in your fantasy leagues, especially in those dynasty leagues, because Joshua Kelly, just by being active, even if the Chargers go out and get somebody next year in the, in the draft and they don't, and Joshua Kelly doesn't project to be that good of a running back, the fact that he's going to be involved in his first year or the fact that I believe he'll be involved in his first year, he, he's got trade value there. But even if he's not in those deeper leagues, he can help you win your championship this year. He can be an asset for you that you're basically getting at the very end of drafts. And if anything happens to Austin Eckler, this could be a real, I mean, he could be a rookie of the year candidate just based on how often he'd be on the field. And if this offense turns out to be good, again, typically when you have running quarterbacks, the running game turns out to be good. Even if the Tyro Taylor doesn't project as an actual good NFL quarterback, he, the effect he's going to have on the running game is going to be vastly improving it. The offensive line, again, is improved. So, again, I think Austin Eckler is probably going to be drafted a little bit too high this year, and he'll probably be on my bust list. And Joshua Kelly is going to be the first guy on my deep sleeper list. Again, I and, and I don't want this to get confused. I don't think Joshua Kelly is going to outscore Austin Eckler in drafts this year, but I think... Based on where people are drafting Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly is going to be a lot closer to him than I think people realize. Okay, that's it for today's show. Again, thanks for tuning in. Let me know what you guys think about Joshua Kelly. Am I way off here? Is Austin Eckler going to be a monster this year? Or, or am I right? And Joshua Kelly is going to be a beast and you guys are all about it. As always, be sure to like and subscribe to our videos. Till next time, see ya!